Hello again, lovely people. Welcome back to the High Wall of Lothric as we take on the big booty baddie of Dark Souls 3. It is, of course, Vault of the Boreal Valley. And engage in jolly cooperation. Here he is, the baddest boy of the Boreal Valley from the Steamforged board game expansion. And if we just spin him around and see the... Damn, boy! He's thick! Anyway, spin him back around and we can see that there's a lot of cool detail on this model that we can work with. And I'm kind of thinking of creating uh, this kind of like glow effect on the eyes and maybe using some liquid frost to maybe create some cool ice and frosting on the weapon. So to start off, just going to get the paints that we'll be needing for this fella all lined up here. The first step to this is to get the whole main body of armor dry brushed with some lead belcher. Now the model is pretty much 95% metal armor, so I won't spend a lot of time showing and talking through just the dry brush element of this part, but it is good to just bear in mind that with this kind of application, you've got to just make sure that there's not a whole load of paint left on the brush once you've brushed it and dried it off on some paper or some towel or whatever you're using, just so you don't get loads of buildup of the color on the model keeping it nice and thin so it still reacts nicely to the primer that sits underneath it. Then we can move on to the highlighting of the armor and just doing that by dry brushing on some Necron Compound, which is a really nice bright metallic dry paint. And because this is a frosty boy, I'm just gonna use some long beard gray to dry brush on some white texture to the upper parts and ridges just to bring some flat white look to the shiniest parts of the armor. The next step will be adding some detailing to the armor and I'll do that first by just loading up the necessary paints to the wet palette, including some Administratum Grey, some Corax White, and also some Cantor Blue and Lothan Blue for the cloth at the back. Then with a fine precision brush, I'm using a Winsor Newton Series 7 for this. I'm taking the Administratum Grey and edge highlighting pretty much all of the outermost exposed edges on the model, of which there are quite a few. We will be applying white edge highlighting to the brightest parts, but for now, the gray will pretty much go over all of them so we can build up to the brightest edges afterwards. It's not the easiest of techniques, but after a few tries, it does start to make more sense the more you do it. Just making sure to keep the brush at this kind of flat angle against the edges, not overloading the bristles with paint, still keeping it nice, relatively thin, and you should get smooth, even applications across all your edges. Then we're doing the white edge highlighting and targeting the center points of the edges so that it blends out to the gray on the shoulders, the face, the top parts of the body, and pretty much all the points that stick out the furthest. All these points are areas that light would hit the most and reflect on, so they all need some of the white highlighting. Now, I do just love this boss. I think his, his, I think his music is right up there with Gwyn's plim plom piano theme. Um, his intro is sick when he just when he appears through the mist. The second phase where he goes crazy and the frost starts building up everywhere and he's constantly charging you down. It all makes it such a cool fight. Also, the weapon does need some edge highlighting down the sort of slots on the mace and up the handle as well, but we will be adding some liquid frost to this later. Then for the cloth at the back, in the actual game, I do think it's a very dark color, like almost black, I think. But because this model is mostly just armor, I want there to at least be some focus pop of color. So I'll be basing it with some Cantor blue, just nice and thin. And then I'll be wet blending on some Lothan blue for the highlight color and focusing this brighter color around the edges of the cloth and blending outwards to the darker middle. Then with some Corax White, I'm beefing up the brighter tones by just applying it to the center and blending outwards again. I think at least with the blue, it sticks with the cold tone of the boss itself, but also gives this nice little pop of color that something like this kind of miniature needs, I think. And with some Abaddon Black, I'm just thinning it down to a glaze and using this just to go into the little shadowy regions of the model just to beef up the contrast a bit and give some more depth to the shadows. As there's lots of areas on this model to do that to, there's loads of like dips and crevices along the armor where shadows would generate the most. 
For the base, I kind of want to make a frosty sort of style, so I'll just start off by applying a decent wet consistency of Cantor Blue with a relatively large brush and this kind of like zigzagging motion with the bristles, making the kind of darker blue more prominent in the center of the base so that we can actually start blending out some lighter tones to the outer parts of the base. And while the Cantor Blue is still wet on the base, I just want to apply some Lothan Blue to the outer edges in the same kind of like zigzagging style, not worrying too much about blending between the colors just yet. We'll be taking some Corax White and we can kind of do this sort of like light stabbing motion at kind of an angle, which I have found to create a kind of cool icy texture, especially when you're doing it on like quite wet paint and it creates this sort of cool effect I find. Then we can just use the white to blend the two blues together a bit and we can just leave that to dry. Now a fair bit of the paint has slipped onto the edges of the base, so I'm just gonna take some Abaddon Black, go around the rim of the base and just tidy up a little bit. And this is how our little dude is looking so far. The next thing I wanna do is make the eyes glow, so I'll just load up some white ink to the airbrush and just create this kind of halo around both of the eyes. And with that done, I'm gonna take some Telosar Blue Contrast Paint, which is a really nice, vibrant, bright blue, and go over the white halo that we've created, giving some more concentrated blasts of paint to the center of the eye. Then just go over the center of the eye with some white and edge highlight around it with some white and blue over the little ridges, and that should be the eyes done. Then the last little bit missing from the body is just the exposed material that's underneath the metal armor. And I will be painting that with some layers of Rhinox Hide and Abaddon Black, keeping it kind of dark so that it doesn't stick out too much. And just going back to the face while I still remember it, um, I'm just gonna take some glaze of Abaddon Black and apply that to parts that are kind of further away from the glow effect just to kind of give it a good strong transition between the lightest point to the darkest point, and it should really emphasize the brighter center of the eyes. Now, before I finish the base off, I'm gonna apply some layers of liquid frost to the weapon, and I'm gonna focus more layers of this stuff to the sort of head of the mace and the hand, and less of it the further that it goes away from that point. And it'll be as if the frost was emanating from the top and kind of fading down the further it goes down. The great thing about this liquid frost stuff is that the more layers you build up, the more of the frost effect takes place. So you'll get more kind of like these icy shards, the more layers you build up. And I'll also put some of this stuff onto the face and body that's on the same side as the weapon, as if it's sort of like, you know, being affected by the weapon. And this stuff does take a fair few hours to dry. It does say on the bottle between four and 24 hours. So while that's already on there, I'm just gonna move on to the base while we wait. Now for some snowy texture, which I want to apply to this, I'm just gonna mix some of this modeling paste with this extra heavy gel gloss, which sort of creates this kind of like thick, shiny, glossy kind of paste. And also adding in some snow powder into the mix should create some cool, icy, snowy buildups that we can apply. And mixing all three together on some thick paper with a little palette, I can just start applying it to the base in different areas. And because it is a thick paste-like texture, it's nice and easy to spread around and also easy to kind of build it up in different areas. And as you can see, the base is now done and all it needs to do is sit and dry overnight. So I will tidy up around this dude and let it do just that. And that's about all there is to it. There it is, Vault of the Boreal Valley. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's frosty episode. If you did, please drop the video a like and hit subscribe if you're new here. I'd love to have you on board. You can hit the little bell icon if you want to get notified the moment a new video drops as well. But for now, as ever, my friends, thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, gang. And don't you dare go hollow.